اسم محمد وعلیہ طیبین الطاہرین الذین روحی وارواح العالمین لتراب مقدم الفدا واللعنت الدائمت على اعدائهم اجمعین من الان الى قیام یوم الدین اما بعد السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ زیارت عاشورہ ون اف دا بیس زیارات دا وی ہاف حبلی دی بیس زیارات دا وی ہاف And the benefits of reciting this ziyarat are uncomparable with any other ziyarat. And the thawab of ziyarat, ziyarat Ashura, is extremely high. Many of our scholars, many of the great maraji and ayatollahs, they have a routine of reciting it every day. And they say that we have got everything from ziyarat Ashura and namaz shabd hajjud. These two things are extremely important. Adil Bahjad, even towards the end of his life, he died at the age of 97, even then he was reciting ziyarat Ashura every day with the hundred salawat and the hundred laan in the haram of Hazrat Masuma. And in the summer holidays he used to go to Mashhad and he would recite it every morning after Fajr in the haram of Imam Radha Salam. During his stay in Najaf he said, I used to do that in the haram of Imam Ali Salam. And whenever he went to Karbala, he would do the haram of, he would recite Ziyarat Ashura in the haram of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Ziyarat Ashura is one of the best Ziyarat that we have and it is extremely rewardful. And anyone who regularly recites uh, uh, Ziyarat Ashura, inshallah, surely Imam Hussain Alaihi Wasallam will do his shafaat in his grave and in the hereafter will get the shafaat but also in his grave. Sayyid al-Shuhada will surely come and do your shafaat. So Ziyarat Ashura is extremely, one of the best Ziyarat that we have extremely high. Now, the Sanat of Ziyarat Ashura, there are many, many books now available even in English uh, and there are commentaries, one by Sheikh Khalwa, uh, Khalfan who is from um, uh, Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. He's written a commentary on it. Uh, the first volume has come out and he'll have a number of volumes. And there are many other people who are writing commentaries on Ziyarat Ashura in English now or translating the commentaries. So you can find the Sanad or the, the, trans, the chain of transmission of Ziyarat Ashura um, in many books in English. But in brief, the, the whole of this Ziyarat is from Imam Jafar Sadiq alayhi salatu wa The sixth Imam alayhi salam, he says that he got it from his forefathers, from his father and he, from his grandfather and likewise. And Ziyarat Ashura is Hadith Qudsi according to many of the Asnaf. That, that is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, told the angels that the recitation of the Ziyarat of Sikh the Shahada should be this way. So it is one of the best Ziyarat that we have. For many amal, many people actually recite it for 40 days. If you do a mannat, you know, if you make another or a vow that if this happens, then inshallah I will recite Ziyarat Ashura for. 40 days. Many people do it that way. Many people do it the other way around as well. Oh Allah, I will recite Ziyarat Ashura for 40 days and I have this dua, you accept the dua. So they will make a dua and they will recite Ziyarat Ashura for people who are sick, people who have any dua, any man, you know. For many different things, Ziyarat Ashura is a common practice amongst the greatest of the scholars. People like Atala Bahjati says that I became what I became because of Ziyarat Ashura and uh, uh, the Hajjud. Some ulama like uh, Allah Mataba Tabai, he said that I became what I became because of Imam Ali alayhi salam, you know, the Haram of Imam Ali alayhi salam. And, and Namad al -Shab. And many other scholars. You know, a habit of important. And that is why it is ex extremely important that you go to one of the Hawzas, when you go to the Hawza in, in, in Najaf or Qum or Mashhad or uh, Sayyid Zainab salam alayhi why? Because it is one of the harams and that has an extreme effect on, on your spirituality. It gives you an uplift in your spiritual status. So that is why it is extremely important to do ziyarat. In ziyarat, there are many, many ziyarat. We have, if not hundreds, then we have tens and tens of ziyarat of the Ayman al-Muslim. Especially for every occasion, we have a ziyarat for Imam Hussain al -Salam. For every occasion. Imam Hussain is the only Imam for every occasion you have a ziyarat for Imam Hussain Say Allah Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. I usually 
usually don't have a habit of continuously drinking tea, uh, but it's an informal session, so I'm just taking tea, so hopefully you'll not mind. Now, Sayyidu Shahada, every moment, every occasion, every happy occasion even, for every Eid, you know, Eid al-Fitr, Eid al-Adha, you have Ziyarat of Imam Hussain al-Islam. For Laylat al-Qadr, you have Ziyarat of Imam Hussain al-Islam. For Nima al-Sha'ban, the Viladat of Imam Zamana, you have Ziyarat of Imam Hussain al-Islam. Ziyarat of Imam Hussain al-Islam. Except for Eid al-Qadir. Only and only Eid al-Qadir. Where there is a long Ziyarat for Ali ibn Ta'ali wa al-Islam. Otherwise, there is a ziyarat for every occasion, for every happy and sad occasion, there is a ziyarat of Imam Hussain Islam. Can you imagine? This is Imam Hussain Islam, that there is a ziyarat, salutations, and you pay your respects to Imam. Even when you go to the haram of other Imams, even for haram of Ali ibn Abi Talib, even the haram of the Holy Prophet, and the haram of Allah Zahra, the haram of Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba, the haram of any of the Imams, alayhi wa salatu wa salam. The haram of the Ayma of Baqi, you know, the, the you know, and Kathimain, Samarra, Mashhad, not only just, you know, the children of the Ayma, but even the Imams themselves. You recite the ziyarat of the Imam, and then it is Musahab to turn towards Karbala from that haram and recite the ziyarat of Imam Hussain. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that Sayyidu Shahada, for every haram, wherever you go to, this is the ziyarat of Imam Hussain from Najaf. If you go to Najaf, then after the recitation of the Ziyarat of Imam Islam, this is the Ziyarat of Imam Hussain you should recite. From the Haram of Imam Mirada, this is the Ziyarat. And most of the places, Ziyarat al So Ziyarat al itself and, and Ziyarat al Ziyarat al is very simple and, and, and uh, short Ziyarat and Ziyarat Ashura is extremely um, important Ziyarat. This is a long Ziyarat. Ziyarat is not so long, but you see the hundred Salawat and the hundred Lan. The meanings in Ziyarat Ashura that I want to... Ashura simply literally translates from Ashara, Ashura. The day of 10th. So Ashara is 10, Ashura, the 10th day of Muharram. Ashura only applies to any 10th of any calendar month will be, uh, you know, Ashura. But no, we do not use it Ashura for any 10th except for the 10th of Muharram. So whenever you remember... Ashura, you should recite Ziyarat Ashura or any other Ziyarat. Look at the Istihbab and the Mustahab, you know, the recommended part. After your Namaz, after every Namaz, even if you can't do the full Ziyarat, then just say, stand up and turn towards Karbala. Turn towards Karbala. After, from here, usually from North America and from Britain, from Europe, it is only about 10, you know, from England, I can tell you, about 10, 15 degrees away from, you know, the dish, from Khan Kaaba, from, you know, Mecca to Karbala is about 15 degrees, very little, so you can't actually turn. It is almost the same direction. But it is mustahab to turn towards Karbala after your namaz, and even if you don't know any ziyarah, then say, Assalamu alaika ya Aba Abdullah. Look at the istihbar. Assalamu alaika ya Aba Abdullah. O oh, Abu Abdullah, O oh, father of Abdullah, salutations be upon you. Salam on you, O oh, father of Abdullah. Yes, it is the kunyat of Imam Hussain Salam. He is Abu Abdullah. From the child, you know, it is a common practice amongst the, uh, the Arabs that as, a, as soon as the child is born, they give him a name and they give him a kunyat. Imam Ali Islam was given the kunyat Abu Hassan. Imam Hassan was given the kunyat Abu Muhammad. Imam Hussain was given the kunyat when he was born, Abu Abdullah. But the ulama say that, why is it Muslim after every namaz to turn towards Karbala and say, Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah. You can't even do full ziyarat, just say, Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah. O oh, father of Abdullah, salutations be upon you. What is Abdullah? Abdullah means the one who serves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who does ibadat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's called Abdullah. O oh, Abu Abdullah, O oh, father of Abdullah, salutations be upon you. Which Abdullah? The ulama say, yes, he may have had a son called Abdullah. But the ulama say that here, anyone who does ibadat, after your ibadat, you should say, Assalamu alaikum ya Abdullah. Implying that every person who serves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, anyone who does ibadat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his father, his spiritual father is Imam Hussain alayhi salatu wa salam. He's a father of anyone who does ibadat. To him, 
that this namaz was saved, this ibadat was saved. Every ibadat was saved because of Sayyidul Shuhada. Everything was saved. Today, if you openly practice your religion, it is due to Imam Hussain. So it is Mus'ahab. So to at least remember Imam Hussain after your namaz and say, Assalamu alayka ya wa abdillah. There are so many stories about the people who were, you know, who had the shafaat of Imam Hussain because they used to do any ziyarat every day. Any ziyarat, even the short ziyarat. Ziyarat al Jamia Kabir is a long ziyarat. One of my friends, he went around asking over a hundred scholars, main maraji and ulama in Qum. He said, I asked over a hundred, you know, grade one scholars, maraji, ayatollah, what is one action that you do every day? He said, every single one of them except for one marja. Every single one of them said, we recite ziyarat ashura every day. And we have become what we have become because of ziyarat ashura Except for one marja, who was Shaykh Atullah. When I asked him, he said, I do two things every day. After Fajr, I do ziyarat ashura And after Isha, I do ziyarat Jamia Kabira every day. Ziyarat Jamia Kabira is one of the longest ziyarat that we have. Can you imagine? These people become what they become because of that, that connection that they have with the Ayyam Ali Muslim, especially with Imam Hussain Ali Salam and Imam Ali Ali Salam. So it is extremely important that you form that connection through Ziyarat. Ziyarat, our scholars believe, are the best way of forming your connection with the Ayyam. You know, when I was saying yesterday as well, last night, you try and form a connection with the Imam, you know, 12th Imam Ali Salam. The ulama say the best method of forming the connection with the Ayyam is ziyarat. Visit them, or even if you can't visit them regularly, then at least recite the ziyarat on a regular basis. Ziyarat is the best method of connection, you know, forming a connection with the Imam. How? Say Allah Allah. Okay, I caught a lot of sugar. <laughs> After finishing, I realized. Now, sugar is good for you in the morning, but you know, not. Mormonas are famous for eating you know, a lot of halwa. <laughs> and but you know, there are hadiths to indicate that you know, eating sweets is, is, a, is a nice uh, is, a, is a nice sign. You'll say yes, you will say that, won't you? <laughs> no, it's not. Honestly, it is. Al Mu'minun Halawiyun. The Mu'minin are always sweet. So some people say, no, that means that they're good of behavior. Not that they eat a lot of sweets. <laughs> so meaning they are nice, you know, they talk, you know, respectfully with each other, good akhla, implying, you know, halaviyun, meaning they have good ethics. Inshallah, it also implies that they also eat sweets. <laughs> you know, because you have animals that eat, you know, meat, grass, I don't know, so many things. But it's only the human beings who love sweets, hopefully. <laughs> I don't know, you'll tell me. So sweets are extremely, you know, the Holy Prophet used to, you know, like sweets and everything. You'll say, you know, he's making a ground for himself. <laughs> no, I'm not. But inshallah, hopefully you'll all like sweets as well. <laughs> I've had a very sweet tea, so I had to speak about uh, sweets. <laughs> even for your another, and you know, for all of these things, it is mustahab to do it on, on a sweet thing. You know, even if you don't have, just get something natural sweet. You know, honey or things which are made, you know, are natural sweets. Any fruit or even anything which is which is sweet, musahab. Nothing, you know, not other things, musahab, to use those things. To give out in tabarruk as well, it is musahab. Even amongst Maradi, they distribute sweet things. Anyway, that was only uh, uh, a side note. <laughs> Coming back to that forming of connection. You know, at this time of night and you, you feel that Karbala is in your heart, every mu'min should feel that Imam Hussain, the haram of Imam Hussain is in his heart. Every mu'min should feel that he has the haram of Imam Hussain in his heart. And how do you keep it, you know, lightened? Through ziyarat. Through, only and only through ziyarat. I'll quickly mention one story that I wanted to mention. And then I'll come back to some of the words of Ziyarat Ashura and the importance of ziyarat. There are so many books now. Ayatollah Jawadi Amuli has written seven volumes on ziyarat um, Jamia Kabira. Thick volumes, six, five, six hundred pages each. And is still writing. I have so many commentaries on Ziyarat Ashura, Ziyarat Waritha, and Ziyarat Jamia Kabira, Ziyarat Yasin, Ziyarat Aminullah. You know, all of these Ziyarat have so many commentaries, and when you look at those 
commentaries, that's when you realize what are the Imams saying about each other. You see, two things we have that none of the other schools of thought in Islam have. One dua, the other one ziyarat. Duas and the ziyarat. What is the beauty about ziyarat and duas? You know when the Ayman al Muslim are speaking to us, they come down to our level and then they speak. You know, they speak, you know, when they're giving a sermon or a hadith, it is down to our level. Meaning they make it simple. Speak to the people down to their level, you know. But when they're making a dua, then they're speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then they do not come down to our level. Then they then they're speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who, is the, who are they speaking to? The best being. And who is it speaking? The best creation. So the highest level you will see of the Aymal Muslim in du'as. Did you all get that? And the second most important, ziyarat. In ziyarat it is one Imam visiting another Imam. How do they treat each other? How do they speak to each other? This is one Imam saying, Assalamu alaikum ya Abdullah. Assalamu alaikum ibn Rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum ya Hujjatullah. You know these words, the Imam, one Imam is introducing the other Imam. So this is the Imam who is speaking and he is speaking to an Imam. So therefore the ziyarat are the highest, the peak of the ma'arif of Ahlul Bayt al The science and the arts of Ahlul Bayt al are ziyarat. If you want to see the fadail of Ahlul Bayt al you will find them in ziyarat. Look at some of the words used by the Ahlul Bayt al For example, I'll, I'll very quickly give you a gist of all the different ziyarat that we have. You know, just a sentence from here and there. Uh, I'll complete the story about uh, you know the story that I keep saying, and then I'll inshallah go into the words. You must have heard this story many times from different scholars. You may have read it even Mafatil Dinan yourself. Sheikh Abbas mentions that there was this carpenter that his wife died. If you remember that story? No. No. no? Okay, then you haven't heard it. If I tell you, then inshallah you'll, you'll recall it. There was this carpenter that his wife died who was, you know, quite a poor person. His wife wasn't much educated and she died and um, there were these two friends who were both great scholars. One of them had died and they both promised each other that whoever dies first will come to the dream of the other person and will tell him what happens in the grave. You know, you have to be on a very high level to be able to do that. So they both promised each other that whoever dies first will come to the dream of the other person and will tell him everything. So that scholar, you know, years passed by something like 22 years passed by and then one day suddenly the scholar turns up in the dream. He said, Menin fulfill the promise of each other. You promised me that within the first three days you will come to my dream and tell me what happened to you. I happen to be still alive. Why did you not come? He said, I was uh, held um, uh, as, you know, for, for punishment because of some of the sins that I did. He said, a person like you I can't imagine you were such a great scholar. He said, no, I was held for punishment because of certain sins that I did. And the angels, you know, uh, held me back and they said, no, we'll, we'll, we'll punish you. He said, well, what happened? He said, well, this lady had passed away and Imam Hussain alayhi salam came to visit her. He came to visit her in the grave and he said to the angels, he said, I've come to do shafat. Do not ask any questions. Do not trouble her. And there should be no punishment for her. I have come to do the shafaat for this woman. He said, the first day Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi came, the second day Muhammad came again. And he said, okay, um, forgive the people that are around her. And the third day he came, he said, forgive everyone in this cemetery because of this one woman. This one woman who is... He said, who is she? He said, I don't know, but I was forgiven because of her. Imam Hussain did my shafaat, did intercession for me because of that one woman. Go and find out and tell everyone. So he said that he woke up in the morning and he went to the cemetery and he saw a fresh grave that had been about, you know, three, four, three, four days old. So he said he looked at the grave and he, he went and asked the, you know, the grave digger. He said, who does this grave belong to? He said, I don't know. There's, there's this carpenter who lives in a nearby village and uh, this is his wife and she died recently. So he said, yes. So he went uh, looking for that person. He said, is there a person whose wife died recently? They said, yes, there is a person in this street. He went in and he knocked on the door. He said, first of all, I want to recite Fatiha. Secondly, I want to congratulate you that your wife was such a high uh, standard mu'mina that Imam Hussain came to visit her in her grave. And he did shafaat. 
And the third thing, I just want to know what is it that she used to always do because of which Imam Hussain came to visit her. He said, I'm really surprised that Imam Hussain came to do shafat for her. She was only a common, you know, a, a normal person. She wasn't very educated. She, she was a normal person in the house. Yes, she did her wajibat. She never fought in the house or anything, but I don't see why would Imam Hussain come to her grave. She wasn't a very learned person. She wasn't a scholar. I don't, I can't think of anything. He said, but there must be something. Think. Why would Imam Hussain come to visit her? That man sat down. And within a few moments he said, yes, there is one thing I can think about my wife. Every morning, the first thing she would do is go to the, um, to the roof, turn towards Karbala and read Ziyarat Iwaras every day. She would turn towards Karbala and say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa sallallahu every day. That was the routine. This is what I can recall that she did every day. Sheikh Abbas Akumi says that, you know, because of one ziyarat recitation every day, Sayyidu Shuhada visits you. So anyone who does us any ziyarat every day, inshallah they will have shafaat on the first night of the uh, of the grave. Inshallah. Now some of the sentences that we use. In ziyarat i ziyarat ziyarat ashura and, 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 and a sentence from uh, just three sentences from three different ziyarat and then I'll see if you still have um, if you're still you know up for another ten minutes and I'll continue after that the ziyarat and then inshallah we'll see if you are still up for it one of my teachers in home I say the Adil Alavi is quite uh, you know ill now but he used to I remember going to him very learned person he was a walking encyclopedia I would ask him something, you know, and uh, ah, tell me about this, can, you know, what, what can I do? So he would usually say, this is what you should do. And if I asked him a second question, he said, ah, stop, don't ask me a second question. Did you practice the first one that you asked? <laughs> I said, I didn't get the chance. He said, well then, go and practice first, and then come back for the second question. <laughs> so I always remember that he not just ask. Um, so that was something that always clicked, you know. He always forced re-emphasize that, ask if you have practiced the second time. Don't ask. Uh, I'll give you a gift from him. If you in sajda shukr, in one breath say, Ya Wahhabo 14 times, you will never ever become uh, needy. You will never become in need of another person. This is a hadith that he gave and I've uh, practiced it. Ya Wahhabo 14 times in one go, in one breath. In sajda shukr. So once you complete namaz, Go to Sajda and say, Ya Wahabu, Ya Wahabu, Ya Wahabu, Ya Wahabu, Ya Wahabu, Ya Wahabu, 14 times in one go, yes, without taking any breath. So this is from the Masumin alayhi salam, Ya Wahabu, 14 times, inshallah, and Sajda Shukr, you will never become in need of any person. Financially, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always keep you affluent, uh, inshallah. Okay, everyone? So this is a gift from Atullah Adil Adil. Salawa. I'll probably give you some other, other tips, inshallah, from these great scholars in the, in a bit later. But now look at some of the words in Ziyarat Ibaratha. Look at the words used in Ziyarat Ibaratha and then one from Ziyarat Ashura I'll give you and then one from Ziyarat Jamia. Ziyarat Ibaratha, what does it say? As-salamu alayka ya waritha adama safwatillah. For each one of the prophets, you know the Ululazam Pembari counts, Imam, Imam Sadiq al-Islam, in the Ziyarat. He said, As-salamu alaykum. Salam upon you, salutations be upon you, O inheritor of Adam, who was Safiullah. So, what is Imam Hussain inheriting from Hazrat Adam? He is one, he inherits. What is he inheriting from Hazrat Adam? His Safwat. Safwat is more than knowledge, is more than the prophethood itself. Safi is someone who is pure. And Safwat of Hazrat Adam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He chose him, He is the chosen one. Safiullah, the chosen person by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala amongst all the angels that He gets the Khilafat, He gets the Nabuwat because He is pure. Amongst all the other angels that were present who were saying that we should get it, He said, Allah said, No, He is my chosen one. That chosen one who is Adam, Imam Hussain, He is the inheritor of Hazrat Adam in that purity of Hazrat Adam. He is the inheritor of Hazrat Nuh. 
He is the inheritor of Hazrat Ibrahim, of Hazrat Musa, Isa. I can continue. Okay. He is the inheritor of, in the best qualities of those prophets, Imam Hussain alayhi salatu wasalam is the one who has inherited them. Warif. You know, there is a whole debate about inheritance. There is waris and there is mirath. Mirath, everyone understands these two terms? Or shall I translate them very quickly? Okay, mirath is something that you inherit and waris is the one who inherits. For example, I have inherited this Abba from my father. I am waris and this is mirath. Hazrat Fatma Sallallahu was the warisa and Fadak was mirath. Did you all get that? So Fadak was the mirath. She said, this is my inheritance. Mirath is inheritance and the one who inherits is Waris. Okay everyone? Now, who is Afdal? My question. Who is superior? Is the Mirath superior or is the Waris the inheritor? Am I superior or the Abba? Don't ever say Abba please. <laughs> For God's sake, give me the... <laughs> yes, I'm superior than the Abba. You know, I inherited it. For example, I inherited this microphone. I'm not claiming it. <laughs> I'm superior than the mic, yes? Now, I'm Malay Musalam. You're saying for Imam Musalam, Salam, he has inherited the Safwat of Hazrat Adam. The purity of Hazrat Adam. He's the inheritor. And so purity is inheritance. Can you imagine? And then likewise for all of those prophets. Can you imagine Sayyidu Shuhadana? Quran is mirath. And the Aymal al Musalam. If the book is the supreme book that you cannot touch without wudu, you cannot place it on the ground, it is the best thing that exists. Then imagine how great the waris must be. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? This is Ziyarat Waris. Just one sentence that I wanted to grab your attention so you realize when you're reading Ziyarat Waris, can you imagine? Can you ever think that you're reading Ziyarat Waris? And what are you saying about Imam Hussain Salam? Who is he? He is the waris, the inheritor of Safwat of Hazrat Adam, the Safwat, the purity. And like was khullat, the friendship of Hazrat Ibrahim. So from all of those. I can't go to the details. This is what the, you know, the commentaries, that's what they go into. And one sentence from Zarate Jamia and Kabira. One sentence. And Zarate Jamia and Kabira is from Imam Ayyub. You can recite it for any imam. You can intend that I'm reciting it for the Holy Prophet or one of the imams. Each one of the imams you can recite it for. Or you can intend all of them. And in that it says, the Imam al-Islam says, Who are we? Who are these imams? He says, Qadatul Umam wa awliya al-Ni'am. Qadatul Umam. Qada is a plural of Qa'id. Qa'id is a leader. Just this one word I'll just explain. Everyone paying attention? Yes. So far awake. Yes. Now, the Imam Islam says, Qadatul Umam. He, they are the leaders, the Imams. What are they here for? They are Qa'id. They are the leaders of, not Ummah of the Holy Prophet, of Umam, of all the people. Now, there are two words used in Arabic. One is used Qa'id and one is Sa'iq. Everyone paying attention? Qa'id, you know, in olden days, you know, even today, the, the Arabs keep camels. Yes? And the person camels follow him was named Qa'id. It's named Qa'id. The one who is at the front and the camels follow him. He's named Qa'id. And the one who walks behind them with a stick, hitting them, is called Sa'iq. Today the Arabs use this, the word Sa'iq for a driver. A person who drives because he's behind the steering wheel, yes? So it's called Sa'iq. And Qa'id is for the leaders, for Rahbar, for any person who leads. Leader is called Qa'id in Arabic. You know, all the terms are taken from the, those cultures. In the Imam al Islam, everyone paying attention, the Imam uses this term, Qa'idatul Imam. They are leaders. The Ummah, you know, just like a, 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 the Holy Prophet says that.
flock and you are responsible for your own flock. Now, the Ummah is like a flock and they are like the Qaid. But the Imam says, they are not Sa'iq, they are Qaid. The quality of the Qaid is that, you know, there are many Sa'iq who just hit with a stick and take all the camels. The Imams haven't come with a stick to beat everyone and say, move. Did you all get that? The Imams are not Sa'iq, they are Qaid. They lead. But the quality of the camel that follow the Qaid is... Have you seen that the camel that follow a kai? They're all in one rope. They're all trained to follow. I'm not sure if I could explain it. <laughs> Have you seen? They're not in a flock. They're not just running. Usually the ones that are running here and there, they have usually a person standing behind and he has a stick and he says, stay in this group. You know, any camel that gets out, he quickly runs behind him and beats him and brings him back. That is called side. But the kai is the one who walks in the front and all the camels are in a queue that are walking behind him, he just holds the one and all the others just follow. The, the, the condition for the Qaid is that if you follow a Qaid, if you follow a leader, then you need training. They are not here to beat you and, and bring you to the path. They are there to lead you. You need to train yourself. The Imam will come when you are all trained. Imam al Islam will come. He doesn't come to. You know, there are many people with a stick. Everyone, you know, all the leaders here are with the sticks. But the Imams are not. They with the stick. No, they say, we lead. If you have the decency to follow, then we will come and lead. <coughs> they are leaders. They are not Sayyidin. You know, they beat you and bring you to the path. The Holy Prophet was the most honorable leader ever because he. He led the way, he told you to follow and then people came behind. This is the beauty of each one of the words in Ziyarat Jamia Kabira that the scholars are now writing. For every word, they're writing a page or two. Can you imagine now Ziyarat Jamia Kabira is having seven volume commentaries still not completed? This is the Shia school of thought. The school of thought. It is so enriched with, with culture, with knowledge that when you read, you realize, I wish I had more time. You know, when I first came from Iran in 98, I used to always, you know, look at some of my friends and I said, I wish I was a bit more busy. You know, I had, uh, you know, a little bit more to do with the tablet work. And within a few years, I started saying, I wish I had a little bit more free time. <laughs> I wish I had more free time so I could read more, I could write more, I could do some of the things that I want to do. And now, you know, when I'm reading, I'm writing, the telephone calls, and when I'm away, you know, for a holiday, this is the holiday and I'm on work, <laughs> 24 hours, you know. You're always mentally, you know, you have a responsibility on hand. Month of Ramadan, Haram Safar is even more busy. The month of Ramadan is still more, a lot more relaxed. Just Quran and Ibadat and everything. And at other times, when I'm in London, many people who come say, I want to come and visit you. They usually come and say, I wish I didn't come. So I spoke to you over the phone because the phone doesn't stop. <laughs> Now I wish I had more time. This is one of the greatest blessings that you have. You're all young, intelligent, you all have a lot of free time. Utilize it. Learn things so you can actually benefit from these ziyarat and du'as. Otherwise, after a while, once you get married, then the life has responsibilities. Children, you know, then you don't know what's going on. Um, you know, and I have four. Um, you don't know, you know, how to, many times, people at my house, my mother says, do you even know what's going on? You know, the kids are, you know, asking for attention and I'm on the book or writing something and then that's it. I, I don't care what's going on. If they are crying and everything, I know they'll sort it out amongst themselves. <laughs> <laughs> you know, daughters are like that. Um, you know, usually they don't fight like boys. Yeah, I have seen that, honestly. <laughs> so they, they don't fire anything, they just scream and everything. Oh, she's not giving me this, you know, and then they say, okay. Everything okay? Yeah, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> I, wish, I wish I had a lot more time so I could read all of those. I, I read a lot, and Alhamdulillah, within an hour to two, I can read 60, 70 pages. When I'm reading, you know, doing my mutala, I can, I, can, I can skip read and I can do fast reading. With Arabic and Farsi, not with English and Urdu so much. It is still so much regret that I don't get the time that I want to spend. 8 to 10 hours, 12 hours that I want to do spend in education. 
I'm only mentioning it for all of the young people that if you can, please do not waste your time. This is the age. Within the next few years, you'll realize that you wish you were still in the same position that you're in at the moment. So this position that you're in, utilize your time. This is a great blessing. You're all, alhamdulillah, young, intelligent. You all have that urge for learning Islam, for doing the worldly things, for doing the religious things. Utilize your time now. This is the age of learning. This is not the age of playing. People have told you, this is the age of enjoyment. I promise you, they are lying to you. They don't know what they're talking about. All the people, all the teachers, enjoy yourself. This is the age of enjoyment. This is not the age of enjoyment. You enjoy yourself when you're old. The dunya is not for enjoyment. The dunya is for learning and for becoming you know, better human beings. And it's extremely important that you benefit from your time now. One of the second parts that I just want to mention quickly and then I'll... Now, Ziyarat Ashura itself has many, many different words. In this Ziyarat, the beauty is that Allah SWT mentioned, you know, the, the Ayyam al-Muslim mentioned the full Masaib of Imam Hussain in Karbala. The whole of the Masaib. Not the whole of the Masaib, but you know, in brief, in Ziyarat say, Nahiya, you'll have the full Masaib of Imam Samana, where he completely goes into the details of how Imam Hussain al-Islam is killed and how the Shuhada, you know, so he goes into you know a few sentences about each one of the people uh, giving Masai. But in Ziyarat Ashura, it's all about Imam Hussain And then it mentions the, the people who took part in oppressing Imam Hussain By name, certain people have been mentioned. You know, for example, he mentions Marjanata. The Imam Hussain very rarely mention people by their mother's name unless they dislike someone's behavior and the oppression so much so that they would mention it. They don't mention anyone's sin openly, they don't mention anyone's corruption openly, but sometimes they are so hurt, the Ayman al-Muslim have mentioned about Ibn Marjana, the son of Marjana. Who is this? Anyone? Ibn Ziyad. Ubaidullah Ibn Ziyad is Ibn Marjana. And because of young people present here, I cannot go into the details of his Family background, it is not very nice. Simple as that. Um, and nothing to be proud of, but Muawiyah was so proud of him that he said openly that this is my brother. You know, mentioning his mother who had no reputation and the Imam mentioned the name, Wabna Marjanta. May Allah curse the son of Marjana. Wabna Akhiratul Akbad. And the one who chewed the liver of the Holy Prophet. Can you imagine the Wabna Akhilatul Akbar. Kabat is liver. We all know who chewed the liver of Hazrat Hamza. When Hinda, she said, open his chest. And they opened, when she op you know, cut him open, she said, cut all of his, you know, the, uh, the limbs. So he cut his ears, his nose, his lips. When the Holy Prophet came to see Hazrat Hamza, he fainted and he dropped on the floor. And he cried and he screamed. And Imam Sajjad says that there wasn't a day for the Holy Prophet more grievous than Uhud. When his uncle Hazrat Hamza was killed. Because she had cut you know, all of his fingers and the toes of his feet. She opened his chest and the tummy and took out all the organs. She took out the liver. And when she wanted to chew it, it became hard. Because Allah did not want the part of a good person you know, his liver to become a part of a, a woman who was going to the hell. And the Holy Prophet mentioned the only lady by name to say that when you go back to Makkah, even if Hinda is holding the ghilaf of Kaaba, the cover of Kaaba, and she says, I repent, do not accept her word, kill her. Mm -hmm. The only Can you imagine how much she must have heard the Holy Prophet and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the Holy Prophet says there is no mercy for Hinda. Rahmatan lil alameen says there is no mercy for her. This was a woman who, who came and said that, you know, and, and she, she went back, you know, she came singing and she went back dancing. She said, Nahnu Banatul Tali, the famous song that is mentioned from her, that she went back and she said, today I've taken the revenge of my brother and my father uh, um, and one of my sons who Ali had killed. She wanted Rashi to kill her, the, the Holy Prophet. He said, no, I can't kill him. He has so many people around him. He said, then kill Ali. She said, kill Ali. He said, no, I can't kill Ali because Ali is very vigilant. And he has, he keeps an eye on every single person who is around him. He'll kill me before I kill him. She said, then I won't take for a no. Then kill Hamza. 
He said, okay, I'll kill him, but I won't kill him from the front. I'll kill him from behind. I'll go and hit him with the javelin. He was an expert. Even if a person was moving, he would throw the javelin and, and take it through. So he hit Hazrat Hamza from behind, and the, the javelin came out from the front. And when, when you know, it came out, he couldn't stop. So he dropped. Um, when he dropped, the Holy Prophet named him Sayyid al-Shuhada. The first Sayyid al-Shuhada, the master of all Shuhada. The Holy Prophet, you know, someone had hit him with a stone on his two teeth in Uhud. So the Holy Prophet was badly hurt. So he said to, uh, you know, he said, Can anyone tell me about my uncle Hamza? So a person said, Ya Rasulullah, I know where he was fighting. I'll go and find him for you. He said, Go. So the person went and, and when he saw Hazrat Hamza, that, you know, the whole of the body has been, has been ripped open, the person couldn't come back. He said, I would not give the bad news to the Holy Prophet because the Holy Prophet said, It is makruh to give a bad news to a person. Not haram. But it's discouraged to give a bad news to someone because you're hurting them. Don't hurt a person. He said, and I wouldn't like to give the bad news of the Holy Prophet's uncle to him. The Holy Prophet said to Hazrat Ali ibn Talib, he said, Ya Ali, you go and look for our uncle. Imam Ali al-Islam came, when he came, he just stayed there. And the Holy Prophet said, Hazrat Zahra was there. He said, Fatima, you stay where you are. I will go and look for my uncle. He came and he fainted. He couldn't take it anymore. Hazrat Hamza had a sister. Her name was Safiya. She's buried next to Hazrat Umul Banin in Jannatul Baqi. She said, Ya Rasulullah, I want to come and see my brother Hamza. He said, No, stay where you are, you cannot see. She said, Why? So he said, No, don't tell her what is wrong, but just stop her from seeing her brother. He stopped her a few times, but she said, No, I want to come. So he said, If you want to come, then he said, Ya Ali, stop her before he, she come. The Holy Prophet took off his Abba and placed it on the body of Hazrat Hamza. He said, cover the body so the sister doesn't see the brother. So he covered the face and the whole body. And the, Hazrat Hamza was extremely tall, so his feet were still out. The Abba of the Holy Prophet didn't fit him. So the Holy Prophet said, bring some grass and some leaves and cover his feet so she doesn't see that her, his toes have been cut off. <coughs> so he covered the whole of the, the, the feet with the leaves. And then Hazrat Safiya came. And when she came, she was crying. She said, my brother is dead. And she sat down and she just picked up the, the Abba to see Hazrat Hamza. As soon as she, she removed the Abba from his face, she just dropped on the floor. But she had two nephews that were present there, the Holy Prophet and Imam Ali. One held her one arm, the other one held the other arm. And they both brought her back crying, said, Aan, just have sabr, have patience. And they brought her back to Medina. Now, I repeat, I only said this to give you just a, a glimpse of Karbala. In Karbala there is one brother called Hussein and his sister Zainab is crying. But there is no one covering the body of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Imam Sajjad says that my father Hussein had more wounds on his body than Hazrat Hamza and Jafar Taya put together. The whole of the body. That there is no one covering the body. And no one says, Janabi Sayyidah Sajjad says, oh, please do not go to my father. And Janabi Zainab does tawaf of Imam Musa salam. She comes and goes around. And you know what she says at the end of it? She says, Oh Hussain, I was doing your tawaf so I can find a place where I can kiss you. But there wasn't a single place that was left on your body where I could kiss you. She cried at that moment. She screamed. And then she turned towards towards <laughs> Medina and she said, Salla alayka malika tu sama. Ya... Jadda, O oh Grandfather, the angels came down onto the earth to pray upon you. And this is your Hussein, Murammalum Biddema. He has been stoned by the people even though he has been killed. Now look at the words that I use here in Ziyarat Ashura. I'm going to go and analyze all of those Messiah. Look at me and please try and listen to the Messiah. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that many of you will not be able to bear the Messiah. And look at the words. The Imam al Islam says, that, you know, Hazrat Hamza, he had lost all of his fingers and the toes. When Hazrat Zainab Kubra came, she said, Why is one of the fingers missing on my brother's hand? <laughs> Imam Sajjad said, There was a person called Bujdil, he wanted to take the ring off. When he couldn't take it off, he wasn't coming off, he cut his finger to take the ring off. Can you imagine the Masaib of Sayyidu Shahada? Sayyidu Shahada is the only Imam who's gone through so much in, in, in Karbala. <coughs> The words that explain the Masaib of Sayyidu Shahada. If you look at Ziyarat Ashura, this is the day 
that only Banu Umayyah was celebrating and the Holy Prophet and Janab Zahra and Imam Ali were, were present in Karbala weeping over Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Let me just try and give you just a few other sentences of Messiah. I've said this in Urdu sometimes. You know there are hadiths that say that the Holy Prophet used to kiss four parts of, the, four of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. His forehead and he would kiss him on his lips, his neck when he was a little baby and on his chest. When the people said, why did he kiss only these four parts? He said, because on his forehead he was going to get a stone on his face. On his with a stick on his lips. And on his neck because Shemar was going to cut his neck from, his, from the front part. But why on his chest? Why would he always kiss the chest and cry and scream? A three-year-old baby would always kiss him on the chest and cry? Ya Rasulullah, why do you kiss him on the chest? He said, because there will be horses that will trample his body, that will run on his chest, and that makes me cry. <laughs> when the Holy Prophet and I'm Ali Muslim would remember Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Hazrat Zahra salam alayhi when she would remember the Messiah of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Can you imagine? This is Ziyarat Ashura. Ziyarat Ashura is such a Ziyarat that gives you the Messiah and all the words that are mentioned. Imam Hussain salam, you know, he has many people that are present, many close family members. But the person who cries upon him, number one, his sister, who comes on the day of Ashura, after Ashura, on the 11th of Muharram, and she goes around Imam Hussain salam and says, that, oh brother, there isn't any place that I can kiss you. And the second lady who cried the most is Hazrat Rabab, Imam Hussain's wife who was 30-something and she had lost two of his, her children in Karbala. She came to the grave, to the body of Imam Hussain salam, and the historians mentioned that her tears had dried out. She had no tears anymore. And she was crying and saying one sentence, Oh my Master Hussain, if I had a chador, if I had a scarf, I would take it off and place it on your body. Because I can see your body is lying in the heat of Karbala. I would cover your body so the sun does not shine directly on your body. Secondly, O Hussein, if my hands were open, then I would go and bring something to cover your body. O Hussein, if my hands were open, then I would go and bring something to cover your body. Bibi, what else, O Hussein? If I was left behind, then I would tell everyone coming to Karbala, here lies the body of Hussein ibn Ali. Here lies the body of Ali Asghar. Here lies the body of Ali Akbar. I will tell everyone that comes here. This is Hazrat Rabab. And they say the third person that cried the most after all of these two, the words are that amongst the ladies, the third person is the daughter of Imam Hussain A four-year-old daughter who, who loved Imam Hussain so much so that on the last moments of Imam Hussain he said that I will never forget you. <laughs> you all have little children in the houses. Let me ask you one question. If a dying father says, I make a will, do not ever hurt my daughter. And then he says, Oh Zainab, please do not cry in front of my daughter because she won't be able to bear the pain. But you know what the enemy does? Shimmer came and said, Oh Sakina, let me show you the head of your father. In the, play, in, the, in the court of Yazid, Yazid asked her, he said, what is your name? She was speaking and she could, the lips moved but nothing came out. He said, open the rope so I can hear this girl. When they opened the rope, she said, I was trying to speak but because my arms are tall and I'm small, the rope is tight in my neck and that's why you can't hear me. He said, who are you? She said, I am the daughter of Hussein who used to sleep on his chest. <laughs> this is the first moment when Yazid opens up a, a utensil, a tush that has the head of Imam Hussain And he shows it to Janabi Sakina and says, Oh Sakina, if your father really loved you, then call your father to you. This was a trial of Janabi Sakina's love with Imam Hussain for the first time, she took out her cloth and she said, Oh Father, for the sake of my love, come to me. Show all of these people how much you loved me. The whole of the people were seeing and the head of Imam Hussain came from that place. Came to Janabi Sakina and she grabbed the head and said, Oh Father, tell me one thing. When you were leaving the tents, your neck wasn't cut. Who cut 
touch your neck, Father. Tell me one thing, Father. When you were leaving the tent, you did not drink any water. Did someone give you the water before you die? Look at the words of these people. This is Ziyarat Ashura. When you read Ziyarat Ashura, you will see the Messiah of all of those people. And the last thing that I want to mention before I finish off. You know, in, in the Messiah of Sayyid al-Shuhada, people have always mentioned that he was riding a horse and when he dropped off his horse, the scholars say there is only one di difference between the body of Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein. What is that one difference? The scholars say that Imam Hassan is the Imam who had so many arrows in his body. You know, the body was on, on a tabut and he had on a coffin, he had so many arrows shot. But Imam Hussein is exactly the opposite. He is lying on a coffin of arrows. He has a bed of, co you know, of arrows. <coughs> Imam Hassan's body had arrows. Imam Hussein's body was on arrows. Can you see the difference between the two Imams, the two brothers? One's body had arrows and the other one's body was lifted on the arrows. When the Rabbi Zainab Kubra asked a question, she said, Oh Duljana, is my brother on your back? The whole said no. She said, Oh Karbala, the land of Karbala, tell me, is my brother on your back? The land said no. She said, Oh, oh Allah, then show me my brother, where is he? Then she looked and she said, I saw the last moments of my brother. He wasn't on the back of Zuljana. He wasn't on the land of Karbala. It was a musalla of arrows and my brother was on it. When Shemir came, he took off his amama, held him with the hair and slapped him on the back of his back. <laughs> Imam Zaman and his yara says, Assalamu alaikum ya jadda, salutations be upon my father. Was Shimru jalisun ala sadri, ziyarat nahiya. When Shimru sat down on your chest and he held you with your beard, Akhadun bilahiyatik, he held you with your beard, and my aunt Zen was watching all of this. She turned towards Medina and said, Oh mother Zahra, come and see. This is Hussein. Oh mother, I'm telling everyone, but no one stops. <laughs> these are the words in the ziyarah that you read. Oh Allah, for the sake of these words that have appeared in this ziyarah, these ziyarah have so many Messiah. Allah, 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 Many people have mentioned, the historians have mentioned, that when Imam Hussain al-Islam's horse saw Imam Hussain al-Islam drop from his back, it came and was doing tawaf of Imam Hussain al-Islam. And it was making noise, it was screaming. What was he saying? What was the horse saying? Imam al-Baqir said, the horse was saying to Imam Hussain, Oh my Mawla, oh my Master, just one stand up and get on my back. I'll take you so far away that no one can shoot an arrow towards you. Just Mawla once, oh my Master, once, get up and say, come on my back. And he said, no, go back and tell my sisters. When it came back, the saddle was hanging on it, and all of the, the horse had so many arrows, and the lady has dropped and he has died. And that was a message when Hazrat Sakina she asked the famous sentence, Ya Jawad, Hal Sukiya Abi Amata At Shana. Oh host, tell me, was my father given water before he was killed? Or was he killed thirsty? Oh Allah, for the sake of these words in this yara, make us understand this yara better. Oh Allah, give us a tawfiq to understand the Messiah of Sayyidu Shahada better. Oh Allah, for the sake of Ziyarat Ashura. Just once in our lifetime, at least make us visit Imam Hussain alayhi salatu wa salam. To Allah, in ziyarat Ashura we always read, Allah marzukna ziyarat al Husseini yom al wurud O Allah, bless us with the ziyarat of Imam Hussain alayhi salatu wa salam. And wa shafa'atahu, and with the shafa'at and intercession of Imam Hussain alayhi salam in the hereafter. O Allah, give us the shafa'at of Imam Hussain in the hereafter. O oh Allah, we know we are sinful, but we believe in Imam Hussain al O oh Allah, we want to see the 12th Imam al salatu wa salam. Hasten in the reappearance of the 12th Imam al salam. O oh Allah, we want to see the revenge taken from the people who came to Karbala and killed Imam Hussain al salam with our own eyes. O oh Allah, hasten in the Imam who will come and whose title is Ya Thar Allah wa ibn that Imam Hussain al -Salam is Thar Allah and Imam Zamana will take the revenge for Imam Hussain al -Salam. Yeah. Oh Allah, give us long life enough to see the 12th Imam al reappear. Yeah.
Wala, forgive the sins of all, all of our marhumin. Wala, give us the tawfiq to to understand Quran and Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam better. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samil alim. Bihaqt Muhammadin wa alihi tayyibin al-tahirin al-masumin. Can you decide a surah Fatiha and three times surah Akhlas for the marhumin of all the people present here? The shuhada of Bahrain, and the people who made the masjid and the people who sponsored the, the event today. Al-Fatiha. Bismillah ar-Rahman. I didn't intend for the whole event to be so long. I wanted to finish early. If there were any questions, we'll answer them now. Um, otherwise, we'll just recite the Zarat and we'll end the, the, the program tonight. So, if there are any questions um, connecting to Zarat, the presentation of the Zarat, then we'll answer them. Uh, in Zarat the Nahia, where you know, Imam Zamana gives his uh, the whole Messiah, how, when was it that the Imam really gave this Ziyarat to the people? Was it before his occultation or how did it end up? Okay. When was the Ziyarat of Imam Zamana? Because Ziyarat al Nahiyya, Nahiyya means Nahiyya Muqaddasa, meaning from the, from the 12th Imam al-Islam. It is from him. This is during Ghaybat al-Sughra when he went to Karbala. And during Ghaybat al-Sughra he had four uh, deputies which he had appointed. So many times he would write a hadith and answer the questions and he will send them with his own writing or with his uh, stamp or he will just give an answer. So Ziyarat al-Nahiyya Muqaddasa is during that time, Ghaybat al-Sughra, when he gave the Ziyarat through his deputies to his Shia. So during that time Ziyarat al-Nahiyya came. Yes. Father first or son? Uh, when you go to the Haram of Muslim, when you go to Karbala, you know in Karbala you will find now, Alhamdulillah, finally, the we have, I think this is the first time when we have a Shia government in Iraq after centuries. So the government has given a, a contract to a, a Dubai company for something like two billion dollars to build the Haram of Muhammad So what they're doing is, it's half a mile radius that they're going to build. That will take the, the two harams in, the Mukhayyam, you know, the, the tents and all the ziyarat, all the places, for example, where Hazrat Abbas lost his two arms, where Hazrat Ali Akbar was hit with the Jabrin, where Hazrat Ali Asghar, all of those are outside. And people have actually sometimes built a hotel, a house, and they're in the middle and you can't find. So what they, they will remove all the hotels. If you go to the haram of Imam Hussain himself, go to the haram of Imam Hussain Islam and there are many places inside the haram. One of the places is called, from outside you will come, the, op uh, the opposite side of Khan Akaba. Okay? So, if you go towards the back of the Haram of Imam Hussain Islam, you will find a place where they, they... In olden times, I actually went inside. You could go inside. And now they've actually closed it off. There is the place called the Maqtal of Sayyid al -Shuhada. And that is still quite deep. And that's where Imam Hussain was, was killed. So they've actually... That's where he dropped. And uh, the, the place that is where he was killed by... Uh, his murder, who, who basically took off his neck, they, that is a place where it is allocated inside the Haram. You cannot finish the 100 Salams and 100 Lahs because of the time of the building. Mm -hmm. You still want to do the Yara. You still get the Sawab. You still get the Sawab. The Ulama say that even if you can't do the, so, the 100 uh, Salawat and the 100 uh, Lahs, then do not leave Ziyarat Ashura. Still do it, you'll get the Sawab. So don't leave it because if you don't have time to do the you know, hundred uh, you know salawat and hundred lan, still the sawab will still be there. But the full sawab is obviously with the hundred salawat and the hundred lan. So in, in reciting any ziyarah, uh, is it necessary? Uh, when I went to ziyarahs, I noticed over there in the haram, etc. Many ulama you know, leave the ziyarahs while standing. Some leave the ziyarahs while sitting. Is there any specific? Okay. Very good question. Is there a, 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 a special manner when reciting the ziyarat? Can you do the ziyarat while sitting down or is it necessary? You can do the, you can recite the ziyarat while sitting down. But the ayma have said themselves that it is mushab. You know, for example, when an older person comes, you stand up and show your respects, when you stand up quickly. 
It is mustahab to stand up and recite the ziyarat of Imam. You're doing the salam and you should stand up. But for elderly, for people who are not well, and even normal days, it is not wajib, it is mustahab. Only for the ziyarat of the first Imam, when you mention him by his certain titles, and it is wajib to stand up. To recite the ziyarat while standing. But it is highly recommended that you do stand up. Mustahab. And all of our ulama say that no, if you're not elderly, if you're not sick, you should stand up and do the ziyarat. Do not do it while sitting down. But you can. It is not haram. Two questions. Well, are there like um, specific other specific ziyarats that um, are on the other shahid Karbala? Uh, ziyarat al-Nahiyah elaborates on the shahada of Karbala. And there are some other ziyarat by probably Imam Sajjad al-Islam that elaborate on, on the shahada of the other shahada of Karbala. Okay, Zarat Ashura, like for example, some of the other du'as, they have two versions. And the scholars will mention that this is from this Imam. For example, there are two people who are present. Or there is one person who says, I have taken it from the Imam. And the Imam says that this person has a good memory and he mentions a lot of ahadith. And one person takes it from another person. He says that I heard so and so, that he said that he heard the Imam al -Islam. The What the scholars do is, they will mention both of the isnat, they will mention both of the transmissions, and they will mention both of the ziyarat. They will not take one away. They will mention both of them. But the more authentic one is the, the you know the one that is written everywhere in ziyarat. In, you know, in Mafatul Jannah he mentioned both because he mentions all the ziyarat. So he, therefore he mentions all of them. Again, it's mustahab. It's mustahab recommended to do two rakat namaz after ziyarat Varisa, after ziyarat Ashura, after many of the ziyarat. The imams have themselves. But it is necessary when you go to the haram itself. Then you recite the ziyarat, then it is necessary that you actually uh, do the two rakat namaz, the hadiyah for the Imam al Islam. <coughs> yeah, I'm doing two rakat namaz for the ziyarat, the two rakat namaz ziyarat, qurbatan Any other question before we. I've seen the Dua Al-Qama described right Okay, after. very good question. Now, Dua Al-Qama is mentioned after ziyarat e ashura um, Hazrat e Safwan, the one who actually mentioned ziyarat e ashura do, do you all want to stay a bit longer? Yes. Can I continue for the two, three minutes, five minutes? <laughs> Can I give you a bit, little bit on, uh, detail on ziyarat e ashura Now, Hazrat e Safwan is a person who has mentioned ziyarat e ashura ziyarat e Varitha, and Dua Al-Qama. All three of these are from Safwan e Jamma. Safwa. He is a companion who lived in Iraq and when Imam Sadiq al-Islam went to visit Imam Hussein uh, you know, for ziyarat to Iraq, he stayed at the house of this person and then later on he built his own house in, in, in Karbala. He had a small you know, garden there and in Najaf. For example, two things that I just want to quickly mention. Hazrat Safwan said that when I took, you know, when I went to Imam Sadiq al-Islam, he, you know, Imam Ali al-Islam had actually made a will that, you know, remove the signs of my grave because the enemies wanted to come and, you know, suffer a due disrespect to the grave. So he said, remove the signs. The first time ever the grave was discovered was in the time of Imam Salih. He came and he, um, Safwan says that he came and visited and when he was leaving, he wouldn't turn his back for about 40 yards or something. You know, he walked backwards. So I asked the Imam, he said, Mawla, why is it so that you are showing show, so much respect? I have not seen you show so much respect for anyone. Who is here? We don't know. So he said, this is the grave of our uh, great-grandfather, Ali ibn Talib. So don't tell everyone, but just only the close Shia. So he said, can, Mawla, can I just leave a mark so I remember where it is? He said, yes. That was the first time it was discovered. He is the person who has mentioned Ziyarat-e Varsa, ziyarat -e Ashura and Dua al -Qama. So Imam stayed at his house and he probably wrote it down. He says that the Imam al-Islam taught me ziyarat ashura and he said, well, if you have a hajat, if you have a dua, then after ziyarat ashura you should also recite dua al-Qama. You know, the, the famous dua after it. Many of the scholars say that you should always recite it. You know, if you're doing amal, you know, the 40 day amal, for anything, the dua, then after ziyarat ashura you should recite dua al-Qama as well. So dua al-Qama is connected to ziyarat ashura Yes. Yes. Um, uh, Hazrat Hamza getting his, uh, organ, organ out. Well, I heard that, um, Hindu 
Yeah, like a, as, a, as a necklace. She wore them back, yeah, she wore the parts of, you know, like she put them in a, in a thread and she actually hung them in her neck. Yeah. Went back to, uh, uh, to Mecca and told the people that, you know, the lion hunter Hamza, we had him killed and these are his organs, so she did that. Yeah, so, um, when Hinda died, uh, did, what happened to the Jews? Okay, now those parts were brought back and placed with Hazrat Hamza alayhi salatu the parts of you know the parts of the body, the 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 limbs were brought back to his grave, when the people actually conquered, because anyone who has a part of a body of a masum or a nabi or a shaheed, then their dua is accepted. You know when you have it in your hand, so they started seeing miracles from it, and then people actually probably brought it back and uh, uh, placed it with his grave in Ahad. And um, what when was Hazrat uh, Hazrat Hamza was buried on the, the same day that he became Shaheed by the Holy Prophet in Muhammad Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ziyarat Ali Yasin, on which occasion did you perform? Ziyarat Ali Yasin, it's a short Ziyarat, it's not mentioned in, uh, uh, in Mufahad al-Dinan, but it's, a, it's not a very long Ziyarat, and there are some amal for it. I can't recall them from the top of my head. And it is not mentioned in Mufahad, but it is mentioned in many of the other books. Um, there is a book, I think I, I saw it in, in uh, one of the books upstairs. Last question. Uh, in Zarat Ashura, um, you cursed the entire Bani Umayyad. Why is that even though there were some good, good people? Okay. Now, in Zarat Ashura, in none of the places the Imams have actually cursed the whole of the Ummah. The whole of, uh, you know, like uh, ancestry. They would usually mention the individual, one person, except for Ali Banu Maya, Ali Marwan, you know, the whole, uh, and Marwan himself is also from Banu Maya. They say this is the only family where the Imams have actually taken the name and said the Lanat be upon the whole of this ancestry. There are very few exceptions, but there are exceptions, like Hazrat Maimuna, like Muawiyah son of Yazid, like very few people. And the Imams said those are exceptions, but you will not see good people from that progeny. Mm -hmm. It is in their blood to hate the Ahlul Bayt al And today when you see in Saudi Arabia or Syria and other places where people, you take the name of Ahlul Bayt and they start cursing you and they start they want to kill you, it is probably the lineage of Yazid and Muawiyah. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically the Imams have only and only one lineage. They actually cursed the whole of the lineage and they said, you know, Wabna Akla, you know, they've taken the name Allah Allah Banu So for those exceptions, we're not... They are exempted. Is, lanat is, is something that the Imam have said doesn't go miss, you know. If a person sends lanat on you and you don't deserve it, it'll go back to him. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why, you know, um, when you say all, then those get exempted anyway because they don't deserve it. So there are only two or three exemptions and all the others deserve it. And Ali Umayyah. That is the only family that the Imams, even many of the, I don't want to mention because they'll be going on. Um, you know, because it's being recorded, so I don't want to mention any of the names. Uh, when you're doing the, the 40 day Amal, um, is it compulsory to do all 100 for this? Um, yes, if you're doing the Amal, you know, if you're doing, if you're making a dua that, you know, if I'll recite Zayanate Ashura for 40 days for a particular thing, then you should do the 100 Salawat and 100 Lan to see the effects. Um, one of the other things is that, you know, when you're reading all of these Ziyarat, then you must fulfill all of your obligations and refrain from anything which is even, you know, that may, be, may not be halal or something like that. So the dua is accepted. So you have to make sure all of these things happen and then surely you will be granted what you ask for. Inshallah. Do it with one salawat and one line. If you want to do the hundred salawat and hundred line, then inshallah you will all sit down and do it yourself. Okay, you can intend for living people and deceased people. So you can intend it on behalf of your parents, on behalf of your brothers and sisters, your uncles, aunts, any deceased members, grandparents, anyone. You can just make the intention on behalf of the 12th Imam al Islam, so you'll get more sabab. So make the intention on behalf of anyone who, wants, who you want the ziyarat to do on behalf of. We're doing the ziyarat of Imam al Islam. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Assalamu alaikum ya Abdullah Assalamu alaikum ya Abdullah Rasulullah
السلام عليك يا ابن أمير المؤمنين وابن السيد المسيحين السلام عليك يا ابن فاطمة الزهراء يا سيدة نساء العالمين السلام عليك يا ثار الله وابن ثاره والوتر الموتور السلام عليك وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليكم مني جميعا سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار يا أبا عبد الله لقد عظمت الرزية وجلت وعظمت المصيبة بك علينا وعلى جميع أهل الإسلام وجلت وعظمت مصيبتك في السماوات على جميع أهل السماوات فلعن الله أمة أسست أساس الظلم والجور عليكم أهل البيت ولعن الله أمة دفعتكم عن مقامكم وأزالتكم عن مراتبكم التي رتبكم الله فيها ولعن الله أمة قتلتكم ولعن الله الممهدين لهم بالتمكين من قتالكم برئت إلى الله وإليكم منهم ومن أشياعهم وأتباعهم وأوليائهم يا أبا عبد الله إني سلم لمن سالمكم وحرب لمن حاربكم إلى يوم القيامة ولعن الله آل زياد وآل مروانة ولعن الله بني أمية قاطبة ولعن الله ابن مرجانة ولعن الله مر ابن سعد ولعن الله شمرة ولعن الله أمة أسرجت وألجمت وتنقبت لقتالك بأبي أنت وأمي لقد عظم مصابي بك فأسأل الله الذي أكرم مقامك وأكرمني بك أن يرزقني طلب ثارك مع إمام منصور من أهل بيت محمد صلى الله عليه وآله اللهم اجعلني عندك وجيها بالحسين عليه السلام في الدنيا والآخرة يا أبا عبد الله إني أتقرب إلى الله وإلى رسوله وإلى أمير المؤمنين وإلى فاطمة وإلى الحسن وإليك بموالاتك وبالبراءة ممن قاتلك ونصب لك الحرب وبالبراءة ممن أسس أساس الظلم والجور عليكم وأبرأ إلى الله وإلى رسوله ممن أسس أساس ذلك وبنى عليه بنيانه وجرى في ظلمه وجوره عليكم وعلى أشياعكم برئت إلى الله وإليكم منهم وأتقرب إلى الله ثم إليكم بموالاتكم وموالات وليكم وبالبراءة من أعدائكم والناصبين لكم الحرب وبالبراءة من نشيعهم وأتباعهم إني سلم لمن سالمكم وحرب لمن حاربكم وولي لمن والاكم وعدو لمن عاداكم فأسأل الله الذي أكرمني بمعرفتكم ومعرفة أوليائكم ورزقني البراءة من أعدائكم أن يجعلني معكم في الدنيا والآخرة وأن يثبت لي عندكم قدم الصدق في الدنيا والآخرة وأسأله أن يبلغني المقام المحمود لكم عند الله وأن يرزقني طلب ثاري مع إمام هدى ظاهر ناطق بالحق منكم وأسأل الله بحقكم وبالشأن الذي لكم عنده أن يعطيني بمصاب بكم أفضل ما يعطي مصاب بمصيبة مصيبة بمصيبته مصيبة ما أعظمها وأعظم رزيتها في الإسلام في جميع السماوات والأرض اللهم اجعلني في مقامي هذا ممن تناله منك صلوات ورحمة ومغفرة اللهم اجعل محيايا وحي محمد وآل محمد ومماتي محمد وآل محمد Repeat the sentence after me اللهم اجعل محيايا محيا محمد وآل محمد ومماتي مماتا محمد وآل محمد and the last part I will read it inshallah after that اللهم إن هذا يوم تبركت به بن أمية وابن آكلة الأكبار على لسانك ولسان نبيك صلى الله عليه وآله في كل موطن وموقف وقف فيه نبيك صلى الله عليه وآله اللهم لعن أبا سفيان ومعافية ويزيد بن معافية عليهم من كلعنة أبد الآبدين وهذا يوم فرحت به آل زياد وآل مروان بقتلهم الحسين صلوات الله عليه 
اللهم فضاعف عليهم اللعنة منك بالعذاب الأليم اللهم إني أتقرب إليك في هذا اليوم وفي موقفي هذا وأيام حياتي بالبراءة منهم واللعنة عليهم وبالموالاة لنبيك وآل نبيك عليه وآله السلام This is a la'na that you have to do 100 times. So you will say the la'na and then you will say 100 times. Allahumma la'an Awala Zalimin Zalama Haqqa Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad Wa akhira Thabi'in lahu Ala thalika Allahumma la'an Al-Isabat al-Lati Al-Isabat جاهدت الحسين وشايعت وبايعت وتابعت على قتله اللهم لعنهم جميعا You have said, Oh Allah, as the first person who oppressed the Holy Prophet and his Holy Progeny and the last one of their followers. May Allah curse all of the people who have oppressed the Ahlul Bayt. Hundred times. Yeah. Now the salawat, a hundred times you have to decide. This is for Imam Sayyid Salam. Everyone repeat after me. Assalamu alaika. Ya Aba Abdullah. Wa ala al arwah al lati. Halat bi fanaik. Alaika minni. Salamullahi. Abadan ma baqit. Wa baqi al laylu wa al nahar. ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين اللهم خص أنت أفضل ظالم باللعن مني وابدأ به أفضلا ثم العن ثانية والثالثة والرابعة اللهم العن يزيد خامسة والعن عبيد الله ابن زياد وابن مرجانة وعمر بن سعد والشمرة وآل أبي سفيان وآل زياد وآل مروان إلى يوم القيامة If you all go to such then recite these words اللهم لك الحمد حمد الشاكرين لك على مصابهم الحمد لله على عظيم رزيتي اللهم ارزقني شفاعة الحسين وثبت لي قدم صدق عندك مع الحسين وأصحاب الحسين الذين بذلوا مهجهم دون الحسين عليه السلام قبل من هذا ما يدعى